We're here at Century City Los Angeles with Dan Mayeda, General Counsel of East West Players, a, a longtime Asian American theater group. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about East West Players? Sure. East and West, what you do with them? East West Players is the nation's oldest and largest Asian American theater organization. In fact, uh, we're told that East West Players is the longest continuously operating theater of color in the country. And uh, it is a nonprofit. It has uh, main stage productions at our theater space in downtown Los Angeles' little Tokyo district. Uh, we have acting classes. We have a, a sort of an actors or career network group. We have theater for youth, uh, theater programs for the community for, for kids uh, in high school and junior high school. Uh, and uh, we have an advocacy arm in which we advocate for greater diversity in network television and in studios. Uh, I'm just a volunteer on the board of directors. I'm a, also an officer. I'm a secretary, uh, secretary of the board, as well as legal counsel. And you know, I handle different legal things that come up, leases or contracts or other kinds of things, as well as basically just being an ambassador for the theater, which means raising money, uh, trying to sell tickets, trying to get people to come to uh, fundraisers and things like that. Speaking of raising money and fundraisers, you have an event coming up the next week, right? We do. It's our annual fundraising gala, which is on Monday, April 27th, and it'll be at the Universal Hilton. Uh, and that event, we pull together uh, different community leaders, uh, and we honor uh, those who have made some kind of contribution towards Asian American visibility in the arts. So this coming Monday night, we'll be honoring uh, John Cho, who's uh, one of the stars of Harold and Kumar, and he'll be in the upcoming Star Trek film. Uh, we're honoring uh, Quest Crew, which is the winner of this year's uh, America's Best Dance Crew. Uh, Jessica Yu is an Academy Award winning director, and the California Community Foundation, which is an organization that has given us a lot of money over the years. Now, um, viewers of, our viewers will probably see this over the weekend. Is it too late to buy last minute tickets? No, it's still possible. Um, I think if you want to call the uh, office at 213. 625-7000. Uh, you can still buy a ticket to the event or you can go to eastwestplayers.org uh, to find out more about the event and to buy tickets. Oh, wonderful. Now, what, what is the one thing about East West Players that you didn't know before getting involved? Uh, I guess the scope of its advocacy work, the scope of its uh, influence or impact on Asian American images. Uh, it turns out that three quarters of all of the Asian Americans uh, in the acting unions in Los Angeles, AFTRA, SAG, uh, Actors' Equity, at one point or another in their careers came through East West Players, hmm. which just shows you the impact or the import of East West on the acting community and on Hollywood generally. So East West has become a major pipeline for Hollywood talent. If studios want to have an Asian American or thinking about an Asian American theme or whatever, uh, they can come to East West and get their needs fulfilled there. Actually, that brings up a question. How does one get on an East-West player um, um, production? How, are there auditions? How does that work? Sure. There are uh, casting calls that are sent out where uh, they can go to the website. There's uh, information on the website or they can sign up for email uh, notices of uh, the productions coming up and the casting notices are posted as well. Now, in your civilian life, you're a very prominent lawyer practicing intellectual property. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. I don't know about prominent, but I am a partner with the law firm of Leopold, Petrich & Smith, which is a Century City law firm that specializes in entertainment and media industry litigation, copyright, trademark, libel, uh, breach of contract, right of publicity, those kinds of things. Now, um, you mentioned how uh, some of East West players work as devoted to you know, empowering Asian Americans, especially when it comes to the entertainment industry. Yes. Um, how mu have we made much progress over the last few years? We feel that we have. Uh, back about seven or eight years ago, uh, the television networks were primarily uh, presented shows that pre presented uh, white actors. Uh, and there, were, uh, there was a whole slate of new shows that were, that were being proposed by the four major networks, and not a single role of lead role was by an, uh, any person of color, Asian American, African American, Latino. Uh, and so we got together a coalition of people, NAACP, National Hispanic Media Coalition, American Indians for Film and Television, and other uh, East West players as well as other Asian groups, and we pressured the networks to come up with programs to try to design to try to put more Asian Americans, more minorities in front of the screen and behind the scenes. And since then, I think you have seen a lot more Asian American people of color generally 
being on television and also working in the executive ranks. And so that's been a contribution I think East West has played in that process, uh, diversifying color TV, if you will. Who do you work with the most there? Because you know, obviously there are producers who oversee the process and finance um, productions. There are also the, the writers who actually design roles. And then there are the advertisers who, you know, in a way, make all of this possible. Who do you interact with the most when it comes to getting, you know, our, getting TV more diverse? Uh, well, we've been dealing with primarily the executives in the networks, uh, network presidents, the creative people and so forth, uh, casting people as well. Those are the people that have some degree of influence on what shows are, are advanced and, and uh, made for consideration. Uh, in, in that process, in that advocacy process, we try to bring about as many different kinds of things as we can. For instance, we point out that advertisers, uh, advertising, commercial television advertising is very diverse because advertisers know they want to reach those communities, they want to reach people, so they're bringing in a diverse set of cast uh, uh, people in their in their commercials to try to reach those people. We point out they're not doing this for their own health or because of mm -hmm. social policy, they're doing this for economic reasons. And they the networks ought to do the same thing. If they want to have more Asian Americans watching, they should put more Asian Americans on screen. And I think we've been able to show as well that when they do that, when ABC does present Asian Americans in Lost or Grey's Anatomy, not only do those shows do very well in the ratings, but those actors who are in those roles get Emmys. And it just shows you that there's a hunger, I think, among the public for quality representations of people of color. And when they see that, people gravitate towards it and they really respond. So we're using economic arguments as well to try to get that to diversify. Um, expanding on the economic argument, there are, uh, I guess, a couple of major companies that measure the audience of, you know, of TV shows. I guess right. Nelson and Arbitron. Nelson, yes. And how are they, how, what, can you talk about their efforts in, uh, in terms of reaching out to a more diverse audience? Sure. Nielsen is really the major, major player when it comes to television mm -hmm. ratings. And that's been a problem for us in, in the Asian community because they have not in the past actually counted Asian Americans or very much. They haven't counted them enough, at least, in order to provide sort of an Asian community's perspective. They have counted Africa, the African American community, so they're able to show these are the programs that African Americans watch versus the white audience or the, the rest of the audience. And they're just now starting to, through some degree of community pressure, they're just now starting to have Asian Americans as uh, Nielsen families, if you will. So they're able to show, for instance, in San Francisco that uh, Asians, Asian families there are watching a lot of news uh, presented by Chinese language news casts. Uh, and and our, vo our viewing patterns, if you will, are, are going to be slightly different than the white audience. Hopefully at some point we'll be able to have amass enough of this data to be able to show the networks. In fact, if you have Asians as lead characters or as prominent players in your series, you're going to attract more Asian uh, audience. Uh, but clearly Nielsen and those kinds of things are, are people that also are important in this process and people that we need to uh, talk to. Oh, thanks so much. Is there any parting words or thoughts you might have for our AAA fund audience? Uh, I guess I would just say that I hope the Asian community uh, goes out and supports the arts, whether it's the East-West players or other uh, other people who are presenting uh, artistic work by Asian Americans. Uh, you know, it's just a tough economic time, and we all could use the support, whether it's in terms of financial donations or just your patronage. Please go out and support the arts. Thanks. Thanks so much, Dan Mayeda. Thank you.